power channel so what we have here is a dual low head cam motor from a 03 Mach 1 now this is going in Project Kendra and the motor was donated uh, to us from our channel sponsor gears auto work so shout out to Greg and the team out there for donating this and actually you know this has kind of been on the back burner two reasons one my work truck over here um, another mod motor. I um, had to do a timing chain, um, new radiator. It's sucked up all the room in this garage. So we finally did our first start on that today. And so real soon we can get this out of the garage. I can bring Project Kendra over here and we can get started on the motor swap. So just to give you some background on this motor. Um, if you check my previous videos, you will see that I did uh, just a very tentative inspection on this motor and I had a lot of crankshaft in play. Try to do this with one hand, come back. It's like 27. Uh, I think I measured it out to like 25 thou. And that's pretty much all I did. Nothing real serious. So today what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this all apart. Um, we're gonna use some plastic gauge now. Keep in mind, plastic gauge is not going to tell you if your crank is out or round, but I don't think I have a problem with this um, motor and the crankshaft. Now, this car was running when I when I got it, so um, only thing I'm going to do is just use a plastic gauge to check the mains and the rod bearing clearances. We're going to get all that taken care of. Um, just strip this down to the block, and then we're going to send it out to the machine shop. Now, um, talking to Todd Warren, he likes for a NA uh, motor to have the head shaved, I believe 30,000. And um, so the only thing we're gonna do is just get the, um, the deck nice and clean and true, have it on, um, really nothing fancy. You know, I, this, this is kind of um, the gray area with this build right now. Now, this is uh, for Project Kendra. Kim um, really drives this a lot, car more than I do. So I don't want to make this thing too wild. And I don't really think there's a need to go crazy with this. But at the same time, if you're down to this point where you know, you're know you pulling rods and pistons out, it's a good time to do upgrades. So I'm still on the fence if I'm going to do Coyote rods. I would still keep the stock pistons. I'm not going to go with uh, main studs or head studs or anything like that. This car is not going to be boosted. Uh, I don't know. But for now, you know, let's just get this thing apart and um, see how healthy or unhealthy this motor is. Oh man, this is like so frustrating, y'all. I thought I had the GoPro um, all charged up and of course it's dead. So let's just get a time lapse going on this. I'm going to uh, pull off the oil pan and hopefully by the time I do all of this, the GoPro will be charged up enough so I can give you a good point of view of me um, pulling these components out of this box. Crank in play. Um, Let's see if I can uh, reproduce this for y'all. When I measured that, that was 26. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this over and I'm going to check this um, rod first. The only thing I'm gonna do is take this off, put the plastic gauge on here, and measure it. All right, so what I'm gonna to use to measure these um, bearings is plastic gauge. 
Now you can read it in millimeters or in inches. We're worried about inches because we're American. And um, this is your range in inches. Now, ride clearance on a mod motor, I have to look that up. But um, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna use this if the bearings look good, if the bearings don't look good, then I'm not even gonna worry about measuring it out. All right, a little drama there. I don't think I got the footage. I had a cheap 12 point socket, wasn't really working. Luckily, I was able to find a 3 8 with a um, reducer. The back side of the rod, back side of the rod, doesn't look horrible, doesn't look bad. Front side, Let's see if I can get this up here for you. Looks pretty bad. So I don't think I have to have the crank cut. I don't see anything on this crank that looks bad, but when I take it to my machinist, I'll have him take a better look at it and inspect it. So I'm gonna put this back on, this cap back on, I'm gonna tighten it up, and then I'm gonna move on to this one and take that one off. So what I don't wanna do is remove this rod, take this off, and you know, with the force of you trying to unloosen this, this rod is gonna flex. And I don't wanna potentially um, cause any extra damage to this journal right here, so go ahead and put both of them back on. Um, you don't really have to crank this down. Hmm, I forgot to look at the face of this. The implant on the rods were pretty good, so I don't think that's really an issue. So let me put this back on. And the only thing I'm using, I'm just using this rod for support to take to take that one off. That's all I'm doing. I believe this is supposed to be 40 foot pounds on these ride boats from ARP. It feels way tighter than that. So if I took this rod out and I was trying to unloosen this, <laughs> this rod is going to flex from all that torque. So the good thing is with having this rod in here, all the pressure is going on this. Backside of the bearing doesn't look too bad. Guess I didn't look and see if this was a stock. If this was a stock bearing or not. This one. A little better shape. Yeah, I think this is an aftermarket. I have to use my camera <laughs> and try to look at that number. But it looks, if I'm reading this correctly, it looks like this crank has been cut before. All right, so um, I got those two loose. So before I pull these two rods, I want to number everything. You know, just. Um, 
for me and record keeping, I want to make sure the rods go back to where they came out of. Let's put this back in here first. Let's pull this rod all the way back up. Let's tighten this down a little bit, then I'm gonna spin the motor over. So it's just like a small block Ford. Um, if you're facing the motor, this is cylinder number one. So I just want to give me some kind of mark when I have the motor flipped over that, I just can't use that, <laughs> that this is cylinder number one. So whatever you, you need or you use to mark it, you know, or maybe you might not have to. Me, I kind of have to. I don't want to, I'll end up forgetting and I don't want to um, screw anything up. So do this right here. So I know that's number one. Let's flip it back over. So now I know number one is right here. So one, two, three, I was working on piston number three. So let's get number three out of here. And just be careful not to scratch your journals on your crank when you're pushing this out. Some people um, will use a little cheater, which that's too big to get up in there. If I had small hands, I'd get my hands down up in there. I don't, so I need to find something to push. There we go. Stock piston. Skirt looks good. Only thing I'm gonna do for right now is just put them in order in a straight line on the bench. Starting at one, all the way to eight. So uh, we know that's three, four, five, six, seven is next. All right, we'll get a time lapse going and um, finish pulling the rest of these rods out. I see, uh, I forgot about this. I forget that they have the rods labeled. It's been a while. But so far, you know, um, all the bearings look in fairly good shape. I had a couple that were, um, only had a couple bearings that were in bad shape. For the most part, everything looked pretty darn good. Um, skirts on the pistons aren't in the best shape. But with that much in play, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah, here's another one. So number four. Looks like all the ones that were bad were on this side. I have to take a, another look. See if my memory serves me correct. Let's 
So yeah, here's uh, another one. I mean, I think number um, eight, I think that Baron was close to um, spinning. That one was probably the worst one. Yeah, I mean, these it, it needs new Barons, but doesn't need to be cut. I don't think the crank needs to be cut. All right, so tell me what you guys think. Um, I definitely have to do some measurements. This motor, um, I don't think it's in bad shape. I don't think the um, crank has had to be cut. All the journals look pretty good on the crank. But uh, some of those bearings did not look good. So at a minimum, we're gonna check um, our rod clearance, our um, piston to wall clearance. And depending on how these mains look, we're going to check those also now i know what you guys are thinking like you know hey man you're to this point why don't you just you know forge this motor out and <laughs> i don't want to invest that kind of money in this motor now what we use project kendra for is to go to national shows and a lot of times we drive to these national shows that little two valve stock two valve motor it might be slow but it's super duper reliable never had any problems going to mustang week down to atlanta nothing and i need this motor to be just as reliable so we are not going to add any power adders in the stock form this car can handle 450 rear -wheel horsepower so even if we did throw um on three turbo kit on here you know at eight pounds of boost this thing will live all day so we're good as far as uh using oem parts on here now um like i say i'll i'll check clearances and you know if i do have to upgrade something because of um, it being out of spec we will do that but um for right now this you know the parts that you see here is the parts that's going to go back in now um i'm kind of curious to check that thrust washer i think that might be the only issue we have with the crank as far as it being out of clearance but we'll see so you guys have to hang around and um come back when i drop that next video when I do pull off these mains and we um, go over what's going on a little bit deeper with this motor. So uh, tell me what you guys think. I, yeah, I hear you screaming at me like, oh, you are right here. You got everything out, just forge it out. But you know, I'm just sorry guys. This is not, this, this isn't that kind of build for this car. So um, leave a comment down below. Um, don't roast me too bad, but Hey, I'm, I'm open for professional criticism. So yeah, we didn't do the plastic gauge just because some of the bearings just look bad. So I think we just need to do some, um, some real measurements. So next time when I do come back to take these mains off, I'll have the proper equipment to do some um, measuring. So I appreciate y'all hanging around watching this video. Make sure you tell a couple of people about the channel. And until next time, God bless.